item is item 43. It is an ordinance. Discussion. Mayor, I want to thank you and your administration for reaching out to me. I apologize that I was not available to be here last week as this item came forward. And I just want to publicly say thank you very much to you and the Blue Department and all the other uh, members of the departments that have reached across uh, to try to explain the issues before us on this particular Digitech uh, contract. I have uh, attempted to try to get my hands around the issues involved, and I know there was a significant amount of discussion around the table yesterday in relationship to other potential competitors on this professional services contract. For my edification and for the public, if I may ask the legal department a question, I'd appreciate it, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Thelman, I understand that this particular contract is a professional services contract. Could you explain for the, for the body what a professional services contract in, uh, is under the law, how this particular contract falls within that domain, domain and what is, what is the legal requirement that says we don't have to do competitive bidding for these, those kinds of contracts? Yes, sir. Uh, under uh, Texas law, uh, goods and services, it would, and Texas law, it would apply to municipalities. Uh, goods and services uh, in excess of fifty thousand uh, dollars generally have to be competitively bid. Uh, there are exceptions, and one of the exceptions is a contract for professional services. Uh, the statute uh, dealing with professional services enumerates uh, some particular professions. Uh, the, uh, the attorney general has also opined as to. Uh, other professions that come within the scope. Uh, generally, anything relating to uh, technology, uh, the, uh, which requires some specialized skill, is considered to be a professional service. This contract is much more than a collections contract. If it was a pure collections contract, it would be a different situation. Um, but as the gentleman from Digitech explained yesterday, uh, there is a substantial amount of technology involved in this particular service because it is both billing and collection. So it, it clearly qualifies as a professional service contract uh, under the statutory exception to competitive bidding. Thank you. Mr. Thelma, you trying to come up to speed on this particular issue uh, over the last week. And again, I want to thank you for reaching out to me. Uh, I indicated to you in our conversations I would not tag this matter because of uh, as a right uh, that I could have had because I was not here. I, I, I continue to be concerned. Uh, I, I look at this particular contract, uh, and I understand it's a professional services contract. I understand uh, the nature of the intricacies behind the issues that are needed to be negotiated and move forward on, uh, and I don't second guess and question that. Uh, I do have some concerns that we appear to be reaching back, if you will, uh, at some professional information or some requests for uh, performance information that was gleaned from a couple of years ago for this particular contract. And over time, it, is, it seems as though this is one of the concerns that I have, that it's a four-year contract as opposed to a stopgap measure that uh, would fill in the blank. Um, and I would, uh, I'm just very concerned about that. And I, I, were there any other alternatives to uh, potentially filling in a, the, the preparing a stopgap contract so that we could move forward and, and have a larger discussion of, of getting requests for proposals for this very important uh, work? Would you like Mr. Feldman to answer that? Either one of you. First of all, I'd like to, to, to note that before the meeting began today, I wished Ms. Russell a happy birthday. In response, she said to me, you know, when I saw you at the meeting yesterday and your head was bowed, your hair is so much grayer than it was three and a half years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I think uh, Mr. Phil, at least you have more hair than I do. Thank you. <laughs> this, this exercise has added to the gray hair. This is a very difficult situation when you are dealing with uh, an incumbent contractor uh, in the form of ACS, uh, Xerox, or Xerox and ACS, a, a company that has had the contract since 
1987, as well as Trent. And the, uh, the, the city was running into some very serious issues on that contract that I really can't speak to in substance right now because it's a matter of litigation uh, involving the, the city uh, in Xerox currently. <coughs> Uh, but we were, we were caught between the proverbial rock and a hard place where we're trying to deal with a contract <coughs> that's providing a service that has to be ongoing. It, recognize this is not like a, a collection contract for municipal courts or with, for delinquent tax and that kind of thing where they're collecting a debt after the fact. This is billing and collection. If you can't bill, you can't ever begin to collect. So it's a service that requires, by its very nature, um, continuity. So how do you how do you terminate or proceed to to place a contract or a notice of default that may lead to termination, and then cover yourself on the back end if you have to, in fact, terminate? It's not the kind of situation that lends itself to a competitive procurement process because you don't have the time to do it. You are, you are dealing with a company in the form of Xerox that you put on notice of default. You have to, under the contract, give them an opportunity to cure. You cannot pull the trigger prior to that cure period being uh, expiring. Uh, and at the same time, you recognize that if you terminate and you don't have a successor in place, you leave the city and our entire ambulance system at risk. So you're juggling two very different things at the same time. Whether you terminate the contract, and if you do, who do you begin with? So you don't have the luxury of a recompetition in between. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, noting what uh, Councilmember Bradford raised yesterday, uh, the, the idea of a stopgap or a bridge or an interim type of, of contract. The, in the instances where the city has done that, it has always been with the incumbent contractor. Uh, for example, we recently did it on the link with tax where we, we did a six month extension of the incumbent contractor while we were trying to decide what we would do going forward. We did not have that luxury here because we were terminating the incumbent contractor. So it had to be a new company brought on board. And the very nature of this service is such that the transition process is a very difficult process. If you go back to the 2011 procurement, one of the reasons why um, the city chose to stay with ACS Xerox as opposed to going with a, with a new vendor under the uh, procurement process, the RFP process that was going on, was that very issue, the, the transition process. It's inherently difficult because, again, unlike other collection types of activities, you have a lot of different uh, institutions and individuals involved.